Then Henry Wharton training at the gym. My best souvenir, well, has to be my European, my European belt, being European champion, because it's the biggest one I've got right now. But still, the, the souvenir what gets to me most is the world title. You know, that's the only one I can look at. So that was training at the Rockies gym in Leeds, and this is the 12th round of Henry Wharton's British Commonwealth title defence against Lou Gent. And of course, Lou Gent on the floor three times in this match, but very, very gamely came back on each occasion to give Wharton plenty to think about. So there you are then, Henry Wharton retains his Commonwealth crown with the draw. And I thought the draw was absolutely perfect. The is drawn, which means Henry Wharton remains the super middleweight champion of the British Commonwealth. Yes, Mike Smith there, RMC, giving the result. And back to Rocky Jim in Leeds. Henry Wharton, a good hard trainer. I've, um, it's become a, a way of life for me now. You know, I'm, for years and years I've, I've trained and I've boxed. And right now I'm, I'm back to the, to the world number one. And there's only one more step to go. And of course, I enjoy it. Henry Wharton lives with his girlfriend and two children in York, of course. Very useful golfer. At the age of 13, the age of 14, that was when my first fight, I took place my first fight. And what specially do you love in boxing? The training, the competition, the, the, the one who is just in front of you? What is the speciality? Why do you? The competition, the, the winning, you know, and winning so hard at world level. It's so difficult. And because it's so big of a challenge to me, that's why I keep going back. I'm back for because the world championship, so it's, it's eluded me twice. And I've got the third chance now, and I'm really, really determined this time, like I have been before, but I've learned a few more tricks. And I think this time I really can do it. Action now against the tough guy. And this is Nicky Walker, the American who came over to try and test Henry's resolve. And this one also took place at the Barbican Leisure Centre in York. And it took place, by the way, on the 23rd of January 1992, directly after Lou Gent's win, or should I say draw with Lou Gent, to retain his title. This, of course, a non-title fight, but Nicky Walker, great reputation for being a tough guy. Cut bad down the right eye there. And once again, Henry Wharton declared the winner. people appreciating what I do. If people say to me, well done, or, you know, that's any one, that means they appreciate that I do my sport well. So, you know, I don't mind. But I'm not, I'm not famous to my people because I've got a big family and they always keep my feet on the ground. The people take me, they always say about me, you know, I've got, I never ever put anything on. You know, I'm always true to my word. I always say what I feel, say how I, I see it. And I think there's too many boxers nowadays who try to come across with a different image because I think it sells, the television will buy it, you know, and the way these flashes, things. Good, you know, well done, good for them. You know, if, if that's what it takes to earn money, we'll let them do that, good luck to them. But not for me. 
There he is again then. Henry Wall once again steps in to the fray. And this time, it was a man from Nebraska. And down he goes. Yes, that was Kenny Schaefer, who didn't get through the first round. All the way from Nebraska, the cold to feel the heat of Henry Wharton. Wonderful finish there by Wharton, cracking left hook. And once again, the legs disappearing underneath the opponent. And then it was a rematch with Rod Carr. Now, Rod Carr was the man that Wharton beat to take the Commonwealth crown, a real tough guy. And uh, this return also with the championship at stake took place in April of 1992. And Carr, as strong as ever. tall angular looking fella all the way from australia still part of the british commonwealth currently probably not for much longer though lovely stiff left hand there by carr Lovely double left hook there by Wharton. Oh, and down goes Rod Carr. And he's got a bad cut on the left eye. Referee Dave Paris tolls the count. Up he gets the blood streaming down his nose. So Henry Wharton then steams in there with the left hook, right hook. Carr wobbles on the ropes. And once again, Wharton powers home. Dave Paris has seen enough. So an excellent win confirming his superiority over Rod Carr. Technically, he's, he's, he's got everything right. He's strong, he's quick, he's a good... Bo but I think he lacks in concentration. He, uh, he sometimes goes off the boil a little bit. He's training After Gary Aiken. Fight, he went three, four rounds doing nothing. And then when he, when he realised he was, he was losing the fight, he had to get back into it. How many rounds are you doing? <laughs> then we are very close, but when he's got his own space, and, um, and I have mine, I've got a wife and a little girl. She takes up all my spare time. But um, and I tend to know how he thinks, and I try to take a lot of pressure from him. He does a lot of charity work and things like that, and I, I do the phone calls, in and he just turns up, you know, and does does what he has to do on the night. But I try to take a bit of pressure off him. <laughs> Henry's image is good. He, is, he keeps himself to himself. He helps anybody. If he sees a lad in the gym doing something wrong, he'll help him, you know. And yeah, he, he's a good image to follow his Henry. Like the real, uh, yeah. Do you have uh, many a T-shirt, jacket with hard and fast? The hard and fast, um, it goes back before Chris Eubanks' fight, and lads used to come into the gym to watch Henry train in the sparring, and they got some T-shirts made, some friends of ours, and then jackets, and then boxing shorts, and uh, a lot of fighters have started wearing them now, you know, we, we make them for them, and it's going into a business, where, you know, we, we've started now selling the, the jackets and the T-shirts and, and jeans and everything, and hopefully, for when we all retire, it might do us a bit of good, you know? <laughs> So this is the one that brought a great deal of controversy. Ringside at Ellen Road in Leeds. This is when Henry Wharton put his Commonwealth crown on the line against Slugger O'Toole, who was the British champion. So both titles at stake. 
I felt as a fight that O'Toole could have won. In fact, his real name is Fidel Castro Smith, which seems just a wee bit more bizarre. As I say, it's a fight I thought that O'Toole could have won, had the skill to win, the ability to win, but Henry Wharton just seemed to want it that little bit more. And uh, when Slugger O'Toole, as he was known in these days, stood back and did a bit of posing, bit of this, bit of that, Wharton worked. This was, by the way, the 23rd of September, 1992. The home of Leeds United. Of course, these are the days when Eric Cantona played for Leeds United. And uh, I was introduced to him on the night and very stupidly said, what do you do, Eric? I didn't have a clue he was a footballer. And uh, it could have all been on the last round. And referee Larry O'Connell saw things almost exactly the same as I did. And I think we, in fact, came up with the same score after 12 fascinating rounds. So... All fights in British rings, bar European title fights and upwards, are scored by the referee. That may change in the very near future. men knew it must have been close good left hook there by Fidel of course a stable weight of Harold Bomber Graham and of course this was the same evening that Harold Bomber Graham lost his British middleweight championship to Frank Grant so both men thinking they'd won Larry O'Connell went for Henry Wharton who became a double champion, adding the British crown to the Commonwealth he already held. And of course, Sheffield's O'Toole, terribly disappointed. So Mike Shinfield then confirming the new champion. And these days, enjoying himself rather serenely on the golf course. Got a good handicap as well, down to 15. Why do you play golf? I like it. I think it's relaxing. It's a challenge. It's something I can't do, so I really want to do it. You know, you get a good shot, I could just sit there. And when you come to the next tee, tee you expect to do it again. And you can't do it. And it always makes you wonder why. So that's why you keep, you keep coming back, because you know you can do it. But I think it's all mind games with this golf. Yeah, check out this. Oh, you've got um, a few people talking about golf, and I said, I can't see any point in hitting the ball up the fair way and then walking after it and hit it again. But there's so much enjoyment and pleasure to it. It relaxes me, gets me away from thinking about boxing all the time, which I know people think, well, you shouldn't stop thinking about, but you do because. I'm surrounded with boxing 24 hours a day. And when I come on the golf course, you have to think that much. That it gives you something else to think about. You know, and it's, it's a big part of my life is golf right now. Do you, think, like do you think you have a special ability for his golf? Honestly? No. no, I don't, honestly, yeah. I don't get the time to practice. That's one thing I regret. And if, you know, one day up, you know, I will, I will retire from boxing. And I would like to really spend a lot of time and just to see how good I really can get. So I think I can get in single figures, you know, play off about eight or nine, but I don't think I'll ever be, you know, a scratch player. I think I need to practice from a younger age, and then maybe I'd have... So, more action then from Henry Wharton's chequered career. This one against uh, Ray de Monge, and it took place in Leeds at the Town Hall on the 7th of April of 1993. And Henry Wharton bashing him to the body there to put him over here in round three. 
Once again, referee Mickey Van decides that Demolish has had enough. Quite rightly, too. And uh, don't forget, at this stage in Wharton's career, he was still unbeaten, just that one draw, the only blemish on an otherwise perfect record. And then he took on another cagey American by the name of Roy and Hammond. And Hammond, known as a journeyman on the circuit, he bounced around for a few rounds. to stay out of uh, Wharton's way over the first couple of rounds. Very lively performer. Henry still looking to land one of those bombs. And of course, against a very mobile opponent, that's not easy. Just got to bide your time, try and force an opening. So halfway through round three, and Roy and Hammond might have been having a reasonable spell, but suddenly tagged by a lovely left hook by Henry Wharton. More to come. And that was the one. Beautiful scything hook come uppercut. All over then, once again, Mickey Van. The third man putting his arms around a stricken Hammond. So there's the Barbican crowd then delighted with another superlative Wharton performance. Play then from round three, Hammond going forward, landing the odd punch. And here's the finish. Watch this lovely left being caught in right on the end of the nose. Watch it again from the reverse angle, cracking right. That one really did set him up. Here we go. Bingo. Lovely shot. And poor old Ryan was out before he hit the floor. After two minutes of the third round, the referee stopped the contest. The winner on a technical knockout and unbeaten Henry Wharton. I'll never forget, this was that massive event for Henry Wharton in Manchester against Chris Eubank for the WBO Super Middleweight crown. Wharton's left eye very badly banged up as early as round two. But more importantly than that, Chris Eubank boxed the best fight of his career, in my opinion. Henry Wharton always trying so hard to close the gap, which had really grown quite quite large, in my opinion. It was a fight that Henry could not have won if this had gone the distance, which, of course, it did. Referee Steve Smoger from the United States. And Henry, of course, terribly incapacitated by that swollen left eye. Couldn't see the rights coming, which actually popped against the side of his face fairly regularly. And also none 
not evident, no real evidence, of course, of the flagging that uh, Chris Eubank normally experiences late in a fight. And, of course, Eubank has now retired. I hope he comes back. Very colourful character. But on our terms and not his. So a good finish, then, to this WBO Super Middleweight Championship and a superlative performance by Chris Eubank, the enigmatic Chris Eubank. So Eubank there characteristically raising his arms just before the bell and no, no doubt about the winner. Of course, it went to the judges. Absolutely no doubt whatsoever that Chris Eubank was a commanding winner over a very, very game, but uh, hampered Henry Wharton. So a bit of replay then from the final round. Great stuff from the champion. The winner and still the WBO Super Middleweight Champion of the World. So that's it. We have got, of course, live boxing to come from the Barbican Centre. Please stay with us.